still Domi, still German, still as you can see in Vietnam. And today I have a video I made before, five things I love about Vietnam. But this time it's going to be five more things. Because the last time I did this video, I spent a month in Vietnam. But by now I've spent seven months in Vietnam. So things might have changed and I discovered some more stuff. So, first thing I got to mention is Vietnam is just so tourist friendly. Like the entire country is like much more made for tourists. Like it's so much easier. Like I traveled in a lot of countries. Oh, let me sit down. So, uh, if you go to India, for example, shout out to all my Indian friends. Um, it's very hard to, for example, get a cheap hotel or hostel because most of the hotels they don't have a license to accept foreigners. So it happens every day that you go to a hotel, you booked already, and they're going to be like, "Oh, sorry, we don't. It's a misunderstanding. We we cannot accept foreigners." And then you're going to call the support of Agoda Booking.com and it's just a mess but here in Vietnam everything is like super tourist friendly like as a tourist it's so easy to find a cheap hostel for like sometimes even just like two dollars a day like that's nothing that's for this price in Germany you don't even get a bread you can rent motorbikes very very cheap for like you can buy it for a hundred dollar but you can also rent it for like eighty dollar a month you can do, you can get a SIM card within like five minutes. No need to do some government nonsense and stuff. Uh, you can book trains, you can book buses, you can do everything here. It's just super tourist friendly. But it's also very touristy. So there are a lot of tourists here, especially right now I'm sitting in a park in District 1. And I guess back there on the street, there are a lot of tourists. But it's very easy to travel, especially for tourists. So it's like super tourist friendly compared to a lot of different Asian countries. And you wouldn't even expect it with uh, this kind of government and stuff. I'm not gonna say too much because I don't wanna get banned or deported, but it's super tourist friendly and it's just super easy. Even getting the visa, right? If you compare getting a Vietnam visa to getting an Indian visa, whew, it's different. It's like different worlds. Like, shout out to Nepal, also very easy to get to, but Vietnam is just super tourist friendly. And yeah, there's not so much English, like there's not much English at all. In the touristy areas like District 1 or near the, uh, even here you see tourists walking by. Uh, in the touristy areas, restaurants, they, people are gonna speak some English, but I mean it's it's Southeast Asia, so don't expect too much, but it's much easier for tourists here than, let's say, in Arunachal, India. So, don't be angry at me, all my Arunachal subscribers. So, yeah, it's super tourist friendly. Yeah, that's the point. Next one. Okay, so the next point is the thing. I also noticed in India, in India it's even more drastic, but people here, they love to help. I don't know how it's for local people, but for foreigners and travelers, people just love to help. Like, I had a flat tire in the seven months, like, maybe three times or four times. And every time I have a flat tire, I'm just pushing my motorbike and people automatically tell me, oh, go there, go to this shop. And then there's gonna be some old man fixing my scooter for one dollar and you're good to go. Like whenever you have a problem, even though people here don't speak much English, like you gotta communicate with your hands or Google Translate. Like out of all the countries I've traveled, the most Google Translate conversations I had in Vietnam. But people are always gonna help you. Like you're you're never gonna be in big trouble. Like people are gonna help you. Like, no matter where it is, if you're, if you're searching some place, if you look lost, if your motorbike is broken, if you, if you have some trouble getting into the hotel or something, people, they're just gonna help you. Like, there's always some person 
doesn't speak English most of the times, but they try to help you. You're gonna communicate with your hands or Google Translate or pictures. Oftentimes it's just Google Pictures. And you never have to worry. Like first point was it was very it's it's tourist friendly. And I think this plays into it. It's, it's very friendly for tourists. And especially after leaving like the touristy area, people don't see many foreigners at all. So you're gonna get help a lot. Yeah. Even if you think you don't need help, trust me, you're gonna need some help and you're gonna get a lot of it. So I think uh, it's a bit noisy, I'm sorry, but yeah, I think that's the second point. So the next point plays into the point I just named. People help you a lot, but the best thing here in Vietnam is if you learn some words in Vietnamese, people there are just so surprised and so happy if they hear you speak Vietnamese or trying to speak Vietnamese. Because for anyone that doesn't know, um, there are a lot of languages on this planet, but there are only a few languages that play with the tones and the phonetics of the language. So in Vietnam you're gonna have a word that's written in Latin or Western letters in like let's say two letters. But there are gonna be like ten different meanings for it because they have different tones and different ways to pronounce it. Not just pronounce it but if you raise your voice, if you lower your voice, if you put your voice back and forth like uh, Milk coffee, coffee, sua. Like, you gotta know the tones and stuff. So, if you try as a foreigner to speak Vietnamese here, even if you just know one word or two words, people are gonna be so super surprised and so happy. They're gonna be like, oh my god, the foreigner he said coffee, sua. How does he know? How can he speak it? Like, people they're very surprised because a lot of people here they just expect that the foreigner isn't able to say any Vietnamese stuff because it's complicated it's very complicated like, I've been to many countries like it's it's a hundred times easier to go to a market in India and say uncle ek tanda pani it's it's much easier to speak like Hindi or something like this because you just gotta learn the words but here in Vietnam you gotta know the tones and stuff and if they see a foreigner trying to speak their language you're gonna get showered by a lot of love. Like even when I go to buy my dinner, like in front of my house, to buy some rice, and I just say uh, "mangdi," take away. They're gonna be like, "Oh my God!" The foreigner said "mangdi." They're gonna tell all of the neighbors, "Look, look!" The foreigner he said "mangdi." So people are very excited and very happy if you try to speak some Vietnamese. So I would recommend you to try and speak at least some Vietnamese. Not just like Xin Chao or something like this. Try to learn some common words if you buy some food or something. And people are gonna be happy. Like, it's hard. It's very hard. I can, I can say it's very hard. Like, by now, I know around like 700 Vietnamese words. But I still can't really talk to people. While in India, I can just get around and talk to everyone. Even in Nepal, you get the different accents like Tikke changes in Assam to Tikase, Tikcha in Nepal, like stuff like this is very easy but in Vietnam it's on a whole nother level and people here they don't speak English. Like if you go to India or something everybody's gonna speak English. Like, English is like second official language but here in Vietnam it's Vietnamese. Don't expect to find English, English menus or something but if you try to speak some Vietnamese you're gonna be the hero of the street. So. Let's get to the next point. The next point, very easy point, very quick point. I really love the, you could call it coffee culture. I'm not sure if it's in my last video. Or you can call it the cold drink culture. But people here in Vietnam, on every corner, even from here, I see at least four places selling cold drinks and coffee. And it's always gonna be full of ice cubes. I, I think there are more ice cubes in Vietnam than citizens in Vietnam. Like, yeah, for sure there are more ice cubes than living human beings. So, you're gonna get cold drinks and ice cubes and iced coffee everywhere. And the price, at least for anyone that comes not from Asia, like anyone from a wealthier country where the currency is more valuable, 
gonna have a good time. Like in Germany, if I go to Starbucks and buy iced coffee, it's gonna be like five or six dollars. If I step inside of my outside of my room and I buy a iced coffee, it's gonna be sixty cents. For five dollar, I'm gonna get almost ten iced coffees. So you're gonna get a lot of ice cubes, a lot of iced coffees, a lot of cold drinks. And that's actually the thing, when I first visited Vietnam, like uh, one year ago, and I went back to India, the thing I missed the most were the ice cubes and the cold drinks, especially iced tea. Like in Vietnam, it's hard to find a drink that doesn't have ice cubes or is super cold or is a coffee. Like, you gotta go to some mountains or so, to some colder area like Dalat to find like a warm drink, but 99% of the time you're gonna get ice cubes and a cold drink. And I would really wish like the Western world, like Europe, would implement this because I don't see any reason why. Like it just makes stuff better. If you disagree, mention it in the comments. It's a short point, but that's just what I think. Shout out to all the ice cubes in Vietnam and shout out to all the cold drinks in Vietnam. Okay, and so here we come to the last point of my short list. I hope the video is not too long, but it's, it's like two points. I just filmed the video about driving in Vietnam and this kind of ties into it. It's how much fun it is to drive in Vietnam once you leave the city. Like if you're inside of the city, I just explained in my recent or next video, I'm not, not sure by now, it's crazy. Traffic is war, but once you leave the city, it's the best ride experience you can have. Especially because you can easily rent a motorbike, everything, you can just ride around and you can get from one city to the other very easily. And Vietnam, big shout out to Vietnam. Let me show you for one second, maybe I can do it. Look at those streets, look at those streets. Do you see just a single pothole? No, you don't. Vietnam has such perfect, super smooth, insane streets. Like the streets here, they're just so good. Big shout out to all my friends from Arunachal, India and from Nepal. You're gonna stand, understand what I'm talking about. Indian government, you can, you can get a good example here from the Vietnamese streets. Like, just ask the Vietnamese government, how, how are you doing your streets? Because the streets here in Vietnam, they're just awesome. And once you leave the city, you're just gonna experience such crazy landscapes and such beautiful nature. It's insane, even on the outskirts of the city. And still, even if you leave the cities, it's not like it gets like a... Uh, I feel bad always taking India as an example. But in India, if you leave the city and you go to a village area, the street's gonna be like... I don't know, like the moon surface, like the streets, they're just not good. Let's just say not good. And here, if you leave the city, the streets, they, they're gonna be even better than the streets in the city. Even though you got millions of scooters, millions of trucks. Once you leave the city, the streets, like if you're gonna take a ride to like Dalat, Muni, uh, even Vong Tau or something, I, I'm just speaking for the south of Vietnam. But if you leave the city and ride on the streets, they're just perfect. So the ride from here to uh, Dalat for me, it was like five to six hours on the scooter. And it was the most fun ride I ever had. Because the streets, they're just so smooth. Traffic is perfect. And it's just awesome. And yeah, Vietnam is a beautiful country, especially once you leave the cities. So, if you come here, I would recommend you, don't just stay in the cities, don't just go to the war museum or some uh, Ho Chi Minh statue. Rent a scooter, buy a scooter, ride outside, enjoy your time outside, you're gonna have a much better time. And I guess that's it with the video. So, goodbye guys, see you in the next video and there's a lot to come because I now have my summer holiday, so I have a lot of time to film, so let's go.